This video is about how to improve hip internal rotation. If you're someone who is an athlete who needs to squat deep, you need hip internal rotation. If you're someone who has femoral acetabular impingement or FAI, very often you'll find that you lose or have almost no hip internal rotation and therefore when you go to squat or do various lower body movements, you compensate or you get pain or something like that. And people are always asking me, how do I improve my hip internal rotation? The doctor might have tested it and he's like, hey, you've got nothing. It's bone on bone problem. Um, but what I found is that even though my hip internal rotation four or five years ago was zero on my right leg, where I have my cam impingement, um, when I worked on the soft tissue, as I'm about to demonstrate to you, I was able to regain full hip internal rotation. So start out with this quick test. I want you to lay on your back and with your, with your hips at 90 degrees, your abs braced, you're just going to see how far out your feet can go, which is a internal rotation of your femur. Um, you might notice that one side goes farther than the other side and this side won't move. But you just want to note how far can your hips rotate in this direction. So once you've tested this, the first thing that you're going to try is to work on your TFL right here on kind of the lateral front of your hip and the glutes. So to do that, take your softball Lay right here on your side, hips go up, turn to the side, and come down on kind of the front lateral part. And I want you to do a tail tuck. So I'm gonna tuck my tail, a posterior pelvic tilt, and then roll back and forth across that TFL. Or go up and down, or tense and release and become dead weight. You'll notice that when you do the tail tuck and slightly roll into the ball, it becomes pretty gnarly. You can also lay more on your back and get more of kind of the glutes and the hip rotators and spend a few minutes on each of these areas, the TFL, the glutes. Once you've spent maybe five, ten minutes on those two areas, we're going to progress to working on the other side of the joint, kind of the high quad attachment points and the adductors, high quad attachment points and the adductors. So, to work on the adductors, get a bench and a ball, get in this dog peeing on a fire hydrant position, one arm support, other hand support, bring your back leg off of the ground, and then make kind of a pelvic thrusting motion, which is going to do some cross fiber friction across your adductors. And this might be pretty gnarly if this is the first time you've done it. If you don't have a uh, softball like this, you can also use a lacrosse ball, or you can even use a kettlebell on the ground, um, which we have another video about. After you've worked on these adductors for maybe four or five minutes, set that aside. Get a barbell laid across your lap, and you're trying to get these kind of medial quad attachment points right about here. So I'm gonna sit tall, get some pressure down into the bar, feather my leg in and out until I find a tight line. Also roll the bar forward and back until I find something that feels junky and dense. Pin it down and then shake your body and the bar. You might have to reposition a couple times to get exactly the spot you're looking for. But play around with this, rolling forward and back, pinning it down, shaking, even lift your hip up a little bit and then shake. There's no wrong way to do it. You just want to do some tissue work right on this spot. Once you've done, once you've done all that tissue work on the TFL and the glutes, and then on the other side of the joint, on the inside and these quad attachment points, you want to do a joint capsule mobilization and a stretch. This is what the stretch looks like. You're here on the ground. Turn your body until your knee touches the ground and your leg is about a 90 degree angle. Place this foot on top of that knee and then turn into the leg. Not away from the leg, um, the bottom leg, but turn into it. If your body is in the right position, you should feel some kind of a deep, deep hip stretch way deep in here. That's your hip rotators and you're stretching them into 
internal rotation. From here you can just breathe and relax, exhale, or you can contract all those muscles, tighten everything up, hold your breath, and relax. Um, get both sides or just get the side that's more restricted for you. And then the very last thing is we're going to try to put our femur deeper into the back of the socket with a little band distraction. So here's what that looks like. Get a band that's attached to a very sturdy pole, step through the loop, put it high up in the hip crease, and then walk forward and put your leg into an internally rotated position and block your foot with a kettlebell on the ground so it doesn't slide. Then I'm gonna shift my body weight forward, get all of my pressure going down through the knee so I'm like balanced on top of the knee here. And then I'm just gonna stick my butt out, lean to the side, and come down to my elbow if I can. I like to use this underneath hand to kind of push the leg but all you really need to do is keep most of the pressure going down through the knee, and then you should feel like a deep pressure in the back of the butt here. And you just kind of shift around, letting that bone push into the back of the socket. Deep breath, let it sink in more, and no stress on the knee or anything, just a very deep pressure from this bone shoving into the back of the socket. So after you've done all that, Retest your hip, abs are braced, hips at 90, see how far out they go, see if you made a difference side to side. You can even retest a deep squatting position. So give all those exercises a shot. Over time, as you free up those muscles, you'll find that even though in the beginning it felt like a bony restriction, by working on the muscles, by working on the soft tissue, you can restore that hip internal rotation range of motion. So give it a shot, let me know what you think. Talk to you next time.